We'll start the afternoon with Anne's uh, last talk, so please. Thank you. Okay, so today, uh, okay, so no, first of all, yesterday we saw that uh, if we take an uh, algebraically closed field, and if we consider so the algebraically closure, then we have seen that the Cremona group, so that I will put it here because now to recall that it's over, over the algebraically closure, it acts on a hyperbolic space. So here, it, I, I mean, it like the hyper, the, okay, the, the negative curvature uh, manifold, but then uh, it's also more hyperbolic, so for our theorem are good. And so the aim of uh, today and of my lecture was to prove that, uh, so the, the, that is, this is what we will do today. So this is, so that um, uh, the element, uh, so H2, which, which is written in coordinate like this. Why, why it means? So this is a loxodromic element, and we'll prove that is WPD. So this belonging to here. Okay. So we sit in this group. Okay. The coefficients are uh, okay over any field, and we'll prove that it is this is WPD. So this is uh, what we want to do today, and this thanks to the huge work of uh, Damani, Gerardel, and Osin. Uh, this implies that, uh, in particular, so the Cremona, so this means that uh, the Cremona group, uh, so this means that Birki two, okay, is simple for any field. Uh, that in fact it has a lot of uh, many normal subgroups because it has SQ universal property. You mean it's so, not simple? No, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Okay, now I start really bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 sorry. It's not simple for any field that does a lot of many normal subgroups uh, and so on. Okay, so maybe I first uh, recall uh, uh, the WPD property that I will use. So uh, recall. Okay, and I did a mistake, sorry. Okay, I start really, really bad, I'm sorry. So this is WPD for any field except for K, so for any field, except when K is algebraically closed and of characteristic two. But in this case, so in fact, so okay, my main my okay, my main point is to say that this element will be WPD for almost any field. Just in this case, it is not, but it, but in this case, we can find still a WPD element taking that taking H3, which will be Y, Y3 minus X. And, and this, in fact, will be also WPD for any field except when the, algebraically the field is algebraically closed and the characteristic is C. So in this case, for this case, uh, uh, H3 is WPD. Okay. But uh, today we will focus on, uh, so we'll consider uh, fields which are uh, of characteristic uh, not two, and we'll uh, look at this guy. Okay, so uh, so an element so a loxodromic H of a group G, working on X uh, Gromov hyperbolic, is WPD. If so, I stated the other day. So if for uh, any points in your space, for any uh, okay. okay. For any constant, uh, there exists a power such that if you iterate enough uh, h, then uh, x and hm will be far away enough such so that the stabilizer, the air stabilizer of uh, x and h m of x is finite. And maybe because this is not a standard notation, I will just recall what does it mean. This means that the elements in the group move, moving these two guys respectively at most r is finite. So that the distance between x and um, g of x is at most m, and the distance between hm of x and g hm of x is at most r, and these elements, we have just a finite number of such elements. First, first inequality is r, stuff m. 
Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And in fact, if you have seen the exercise uh, recitation one, in fact, it's really not harder to prove that. In fact, here you can choose the element you want. So this is the, the definition is equivalent to say that just there exists one. So now I will keep this definition. Well, there is an equivalence between these two, these two definitions. And uh, in fact, the first step of the of the proof will be to to even uh, kind of weaken this uh, this condition. So if you have a group which acts on a hyperbolic space, even if it's of infinite dimension, like this, so a copy of well uh, some H n with n can be infinite. Then in fact you can also choose to have a R to 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 prove the condition taking just one R, okay. And this, okay, I will give you, well, I will do this. And so this is the first step. And like this, we have really less things to, to consider and we'll uh, prove then that uh, H2 satisfies this new condition. So first part, so if X is some uh, H and, well, I will put H and C, but it can be H and uh, then H is, belonging to your group is WPD, if and only if now, so there exists Y in X, there exists uh, Epsilon, uh, okay, Eta, uh, strictly positive, and uh, there exists uh, L integer such that the Eta stabilizer of Y and uh, H, L of Y is finite. So this is what we will, uh, so this is what we will prove uh, now. So here in fact, so, so this is the condition which is, so, okay, just to give the idea. So if I, if I draw, okay, this WPD condition. So okay, I assume I have this condition. So I can take Y where I want. So usually I, I like to take it on the axis of H. So here it's the axis of H. And I choose to take y, uh, okay, on my axis, and we know that so okay, we know that there exists a eta, and the l such that uh, the elements that move uh, at most eta y and h, uh, l of y, they are not uh, uh, they are finite. Does this mean that if your elements move uh, this? Two points in this ball, they have to be a finite number of such elements. And now, okay, the idea is that what we want to prove is that if we take now, okay, another, well, I will do it for all. So now, if you take any other point in this axis, we want to prove that for any R, uh, you will have such a condition, okay? So if I take, uh, okay, I take my X somewhere. And okay, the idea is that if you take a, a negative power far enough, okay. So first of all, uh, if y is uh, less or well, yeah. so in some sense, so this condition is that well. In fact, if you can do it for a small eta, for a eta fixed, you can do it for a smaller eta. So the condition is more well is more relevant when you take big. In fact, this condition is is, is uh, more complicated to check if R is bigger, okay? So we can, okay, just for the picture now, we can assume that uh, epsilon is bigger than eta. And so what you can do is that if you iterate uh, H negatively enough far, so let's say yeah, here, you have some uh, M1 and here H uh, M2 X, because the, 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 the geodics are strictly convex, okay? So even if if here you you look a condition on uh, bigger balls, okay, uh, my ball is on bigger balls. So if you have uh, an element who sends this point to this one, and send this one to this ball here, inside this ball here, still the geodesic, okay, the the geodesic will stay in this kind of so the geodesic will stay in this tube. So the axis will be contained in this tube. And you have, if you have taken these two elements far enough, this tube, it will go 
above HL of Y and the Y, it will go, it will go inside the ball uh, of radius uh, epsi, uh, eta. Okay, so this is eta. This is epsilon. And so if you go far away, so in some sense, it means so if you have, uh, so here, if you have finite number of elements who moves, okay, this tells you that if you have elements which are moved at most epsilon, still their axis has to go inside this ball. Okay. And this means that you don't have a huge margin here to, to move. Okay. So now what you have to control here is that still this will be here, they will not move so much. So, okay, in this direction, the, the convexity of the geodesic tells you that it's okay. And now you have to check that, uh, okay, the problem will be that uh, if you have an uh, element which uh, stay in this tube, but they have, uh, they have a lot of, uh, uh, they move those, your point a bit uh, in the direction of the axis. Okay, so this is the key point to understand. Because of the convexity of the distance, in fact, moving away in this way, it's not a problem because you can just go far away and you're done. So this is, a, so I will make now more precise what, uh, what is, so this is the principal idea of. Uh, uh, okay, so I will introduce just a few notations. So if you take X and X prime on your axis, and uh, you take epsilon strictly positive. So what I will call the ge geodesic tube, geodesic tube, C, X, X prime, epsilon. It will be so I, I have my axis. I have two points, X and X prime. And okay, so it's in a, not in a plane, but you have to, to think in a, dimension. So I take the ball here of radius epsilon, and I look at the geodesic tube containing this, uh, where the end, of, well, where the, so a geodesic tube such that the, the face on the side here, there the ball of uh, radius epsilon. But okay, or or if you want, if you if you cut by a plane, this has to be a, a rectangle, a geodesic rectangle, and we make it rotated around the axis, okay? So you have this kind of picture. Okay, and uh, okay, facts that uh, I think you can be really complex is that if you take on the axis X, you take four points, but order like this. Uh, so if I take here Z and here Z prime, uh, if I look at the tube, uh, so, well, first of all, the epsilon stabilizer of X and X prime will be included in the epsilon stabilizer of Z and Z prime. So by the argument I gave before, so if you moved uh, these two points not so much, then you will not move these two points not so far. This is by convexity by strict convexity. And you have also that the tube uh, of rayon epsilon of X, X, X prime goes inside the tube of rayon epsilon, of radius epsilon, sorry, and uh, center in Z and Z prime. So if I do here the, 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 the ball of uh, radius epsilon, you see that my, uh, so the, maybe I will put colors. For the same radius here, this will go inside this tube here. Okay. This tube. And uh, okay. And now it is okay. So what will so okay? So uh, where it is written. So now we want to prove this condition. Uh, so yeah, we want to. So we want to weaken this condition. So. Because I don't really want to be with some HL of Y, HN of X, and so on. I can rephrase what we want to show. So it is enough to show the following. So for every okay. epsilon, uh, non-negative, uh, non, non, non uh, eta strictly positive, for any Z, Z prime, uh, W, on the x of h, on the axis of h, you can find two powers such that the eta stabilizer 
of z and z prime is finite so that's this is finite implies that the epsilon stabilizer of uh, w and so of h minus n of w h m of w oh, this is finite this is finite okay so just uh, pass why this is not true so in fact uh, from here, so my Z will be my, uh, okay, my Y, uh, HL of Y will be Z prime. Okay, so this, okay, I put epsilon and okay. this is R. And uh, if you have this, which is finite, this is uh, the assumption, we want to prove that this is finite for any epsilon. And this will be the same, but taking this equals to X, and uh, this is uh, H, uh, this is H M plus M. Okay. So it's, it's just rephrasing what we want to show, but like this, I, I remove all the... Okay, so now I will do a picture. So I can start with, so I will start with my W. So I have my H, H minus N W, my H M W. And because I want to consider the epsilon stabilizer, I will look at this plus, uh, plus epsilon and H M W minus epsilon. And okay, I have the W somewhere and the Z and Z prime somewhere. So I so I take so uh, this const this uh, this uh, power I can choose them so I choose them to be far away, okay. So I, I choose them at first to be far further from W from Z and Z prime, and in fact, so by convexity of the distance, I can choose n and m such that as a tube. Uh, center in H minus N W plus epsilon, so here, and centered here, H N minus epsilon, of radius epsilon goes inside the tube center in Z minus epsilon and Z prime plus epsilon with radius uh, eta over three. Uh, if I have this set over three because at some point I will have a triangle inequality and uh, I will need this thing. Okay, so, so these are far away. So now I have my, so I have my tube centered in, in here of radius epsilon. I have my tube here of radius epsilon. And they are far away in order that it goes, it, it passes not so far from uh, zeta, zeta prime. And uh, this is the true. Uh, yeah. This is now eta over three. Uh, so we want, so now we want to prove that the stabilizer of this is finite. So, okay, we want to prove that this stabilizer is finite. So we want, so aim now that the epsilon stabilizer of H uh, minus N for this N uh, choosing like this way of W H M of W is finite. So we do it by contradiction. We will assume it's not the case and we'll see that there is a problem. So by contradiction, we assume That this is infinite, infinite. So we can take a sequence inside of pairwise uh, distinct elements. So, uh, uh, pairwise distinct, pairwise. And uh, we want to get a, a, a contradiction. So, up. Oh, so 
So now, okay, so we have our, uh, our family FN, which are in fact in this, uh, so, they are, so they are in this epsilon ball. So this is my epsilon ball of the FN of, uh, of this element. And what I can do is that I can project them on the axis of H, okay? And this, I call it PM. And so my, P, my PM, they will be inside this segment. Okay, so let PN be the projection on the axis of H of Fn of Hn big n big, uh, big n of W, and we can project the other one of H. So this is minus n, so W. So Pn belongs to uh, H minus N W minus Epsilon H M W. But this means that, okay, so they're in this ball. So if I take this point here and uh, how it moved, uh, so here I have my other ball. And if I take, uh, for instance, F N of H M W, but what we have by, by the construction of my tree, this means that it will go inside this, uh, okay, inside this red, uh, this gray, uh, this uh, pink uh, tube, because at works it will be here, okay? The, the projection is, is inside this, uh, this ball, so it will be at works here. And because by construction, this uh, pink one goes inside the yellow one, it will go in particular in the yellow one, okay? So this is just to say that for all N, so by construction, for all n, if you take the segment Fn of H minus capital NW plus, uh, uh, um, no, this thing, sorry, uh, F, oh, Fn, no, sorry, I am doing, so this is a sequence. Sorry, so this is my, my element of my sequence, okay. Fn of H M W. This is in, this is in uh, uh, this segment uh, pass through, goes inside T uh, eta over three, uh, Z minus epsilon, Z prime plus epsilon. Moreover, because they belong to the epsilon stabilizer of these two guys, they also belong to the epsilon stabilizer of Z and Z prime. Okay, this was my fact uh, somewhere else. But I didn't see it. Yeah, by this fact. So by fact one. Uh, so by fact one, so. Okay, they, they belong to the epsilon stabilizer of. Uh, H minus NW, HMW, uh, so they belong in particular to the epsilon uh, stabilizer of Z and Z prime. So fact one for all N, Fn belong to the epsilon stabilizer of Z and Z prime. So in particular, it means that Fn of Z belongs to the ball, to the closed ball center in Z, in Z and uh, and of radius epsilon, and we are almost okay. So now, I don't know if you can really see in this picture. So if I look, what does Fn on my Z? It moves. It moves it of uh, at most epsilon. So if I so maybe it goes here. No, yeah, it has to stay in the right red, but in the pink one. So finance maybe does this thing. No, sorry. I want to look at how we move this Z and Z prime. So maybe it does this thing. And I can look again at the projection on the axis. Let Zn be the projection of Fn of Z on the axis of H. And this tells you that for all N, Zn belongs to the compact Z minus epsilon, Z plus epsilon. So this was all to get a compact thing. So now, 
we can assume, okay, so that now we have a sequence in the compact, so we can assume that uh, it converges. And, and in fact, we can assume that, so there exists a K0 such that for all K bigger than K0, the distance between ZK and Z0 is at most N over three, uh, it over three. Okay, and now we can put everything together. <clears throat> so I recall, we, we did by contradiction the fact that this was, so we assumed that this was infinite and we want to prove that there is a contradiction and that this in fact is infinite. Okay, so now we have to, so now let's do it. So this implies that for all K bigger than K zero, we can look at the distance between uh, F K zero of Z and Z, I don't know, and F K of Z. This is less than the distance between F K zero so this is just triangle inequality, fk0, uh, zk0, plus distance between zk0, z, k, plus distance between z, k, f, k of z. So this by assumption here, so by here, we get that this one is less than eta over three. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, the distance between Z and ZK is zero. So if I have, uh, okay, if I have my F, so this is my FK, let's say that this is my FK of Z. So I have the projection here. Uh, okay, so th the distance here, because the tube, the, we said that the geodesic was passing through inside the tube yellow, this means that the distance uh, up is less than eta over three. So the distance between the projection and this guy is less than eta over three. Okay, so the fact that uh, I write it somewhere. Okay, this condition here uh, tells you that uh, this has to be less than over eta over three, and this is less than eta over three. Okay. And so now if we, because the action is by isometry, then we have an infinite, so you can consider the family fk zero minus one of fk. Uh, KB. This is an infinite family that moves z at, at, most, uh, at most n. So this, okay, then you can do exactly the same uh, argument for z prime. So you get an infinite family that move z and z prime of at most eta, and this is a contradiction. Okay, plus do the same with that prime. And then uh, you wait. So in fact, so this is a general fact, not, nothing related to Cremona that, uh, in fact, if you act on a hyperbolic space, you can just uh, reduce your, your, your thing. At which time, uh, I have yeah, 12 minutes, okay. So now, okay, now we have a criterion which is uh, nicer and that I erased, super. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, so now, uh, so the second part uh, is to prove that this H2 satisfies this criterion so that uh, you can find the point in your axis uh, such that there exists an epsilon. It is su sufficient to find just an epsilon strictly positive such that uh, you can find a power the, uh, the epsilon stabilizer of uh, uh, X and uh, H and X is finite. So this is what we will do. Well, so first of all, we will find, well, this could be a lemma that uh, we will not do now, but just to say that you can find the epsilon. So, you can find the, uh, okay, you can choose WN to be a special point of your axis. So this is, so WN is a projection. This is a projection of uh, <clears throat> H2 of L onto the axis of H. Okay, so you have your hyperbolic space. You have your axis of H. 
So this we are able to compute it uh, explicitly in, for our action. So and uh, you have the class of the line in your space, and you can take the projection of the line onto your uh, geodesic, and this is what I will call W. So W is the projection of the line on my uh, axis of H. Okay, and now there is a, lem a lemma that says that you can find the epsilon, so you can you, you can really find it such that uh, for all elements belonging to the epsilon stabilizer of W, uh, such that any F uh, is in fact in PGL3. So it will be of degree one. Okay. And this is not, okay, I will not do it, but this is not really surprising because if you remember what we did yesterday, the distance, the distance was uh, given by the arc cosine of the intersection number between classes. And if you intersect the image of the line with the line, then you get the degree of the map. So if you, if you find W good enough, then in fact, your, the degree of the map. So if you move, W not so not so far, then the, the, the degree of the map has to be not so big. This is a, you do a triangle inequality and you're okay. Well, in fact, it has to be one. And once you have this thing, well, we are almost done. For the one who did the exercise five today is the, the kind of uh, computation that uh, 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 it's, it's kind of similar uh, computation. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, so the, 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 the statement says that there exists some sort greater than greater than zero to any f in what? Sorry. Uh, no, I well, I'm really in the stabilizer in the epsilon stabilizer things. Oh. I, I'm really in the epsilon stabilizer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So now let's say. So in fact, what we, what we will prove. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'll prove that uh, the epsilon stabilizer of H minus two W and H two W is finite. And just to comment, so in fact, the exchange is defined if you take the Cremona group over the algebraic plus field, but then my, my statement is for any K. So in fact, just uh, the, the stupid remark is just that BRP two of K is included inside this uh, the big group, so it acts also on the H infinity. And so, if I look, if I say that the epsilon stabilizer in this group is finite, then automatically I get the result in this group. Okay, so this is why we don't really care that it's uh, the algebraic closure. And uh, okay, so we take a so fix epsilon like in the lemma. And so this means that so this means that uh, if you take f that belong to the epsilon stab, so I will call these things a. If a belongs to a, then f is of the form uh, is belonging to GL3. So it's of the form x y z. Uh, it is sent to a x plus b y. So a one b one is c one z. A two x plus b2 y plus c2 z a3 x plus b3 y plus z3 plus c3 z and where a so and a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 a3 b3 c3 belong to pgl3 okay okay and so now the game so you have well you can have uh, um so if uh, you have uh, if your field is infinite, you have infinitely many coefficients. So now the game is to say that you have, in fact, uh, you, you can reduce some cases to, to get a finite number of possibilities. And okay, I will do just uh, just one argument to reduce, and uh, the other one works uh, kind of similarly. Ah yeah, ju uh, just a remark is that big, okay. I, I went a bit faster, but I said that if a belongs to to this one, then by the fact that I said before. This is included in the uh, epsilon stabilizer of uh, W because I took N and M. Uh... Okay, so now I, I come back to F belong to A, and in particular, 
this means that uh, by the same argument, so now I use the fact that it was stabilizing W, but it also stabilized, epsilon stabilized H minus one of W, H W. So F belongs to the epsilon stabilizer of H minus one W, H W. So let's, let's look what does it mean. This means that the distance between F of H minus one W, H minus one W is less than epsilon. So I, I do just for this case, and then you can do the other one similarly. And this means that the conjugate of F by H, so H, F, H minus one W, W is less than epsilon. So this means that the conjugate belongs to the, the epsilon stabilizer of W. So by the lemma, again, this means that this is in PGL3. H, F, H minus one belong to PGL3. And in this case, we can argue without doing uh, too many computation. So uh, uh, if you remember well, you had your H and uh, the, so this was the base point of H. <clears throat> and this line was contracted to the base point of F minus one. And in fact, in the other way around, this line was contracted to this point. So now if we look just in the two minutes, I, I have uh, geometrically what that means. So it's in PGL3, so it has to send curves to, uh, well, lines to lines. This is, uh... so now I want to, to understand what is going to this line, okay? H minus one, it contracted to this point. Then we have seen that F, it's an, it's an automorphism, so it has to send points to a point. So if you send my points anywhere, uh, so this is contracted to here. If it doesn't fix this point, it is sent to someone el to somewhere else, and it will be either to a point here, and if it's in this line, it will be to this point here. So this it's not possible. So the only possible thing is that it fixes this point, because then it will be sent back to the line. So this implies that H, F, H minus one of the points, <clears throat> one, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, one, zero, zero, it is one zero zero. Okay, and doing the argument with the other one, you have to also preserve the zero one zero. And if you do the computation, and then this will kill you. Uh, this will give you. This will give you. This will kill you. This coefficient and uh, this coefficient in one in one for the first one, and then it kill, it will kill this coefficient and this coefficient for the third one. So, okay, you just do the computation. And so now you have this, this coefficient, and okay, we are in PGL3, so we can fix one of the coefficients. So we can fix this one to be one. And now you have to fix the H minus two W, and if you do the computation, you will, have, you will, you will see appear like in the case of the automorphism of C2, that uh, in fact, uh, this coefficient, so this, this coefficient will be killed, this one will be killed, and these two will be square root of unit, and the one will be the square of the other one. So then this is just a computation. And okay, that's all. Thanks. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yes. Did you think that you use the, you actually get like the action on each independence, or are you really just using the fact that you get an action on the ones? No, well, I really, because in fact, this thing, uh, um, this weekend part of the, of the, um, of the of the WPD property, I think it's wrong in general. Okay, I, I'm not sure, but but this is so the fact that the geodesic are really super convex. I, I don't. I think it's it's wrong in because this is really the fact that you are minus one curvature and in delta in Gromov hyperbolic space. Okay, global well, from far you are negatively curved, but you can have some balls. And this is uh, I think this is. Well, well, I think you you can ask that eight times something like hundred times in competitive constants, but you can only be good. Okay. Other questions? In general, I, I guess like it's not known of any space on which the action is based on people very much. Is, have, sorry? Like uh, we don't know like uh, uh, on which one is a cylindrical? Yeah. Uh, like, um. Yeah. Okay. I I have I have a guess, but um, I always be a bit lazy to so. Um, in fact, so as I, I as I told you yesterday, I think yeah. Uh, so you have this GL two Z. And the logarithmic of gel 2 z they will not be WPD. 
okay because they will um, they will um, uh, they will preserve the, uh, the diagonal elements which are in pgl3 so you can do the same kind of argument so it will be all the group if you take the normal subgroup and so i, I build my phd so some graph and where in, in some sense i i i kill these guys so uh, no so sorry i um no i I killed some subgroup which are uh, which are bad, and so I think then, but uh, okay, but it's not known. But uh, no. also, in fact, I don't really know. Uh, well, me, me, I was really happy because this super uh, good machinery gives us normal subgroup, and this was. Uh, but I don't know uh, why it's uh, well. If you have an action which is really cylindrical, if it's what what it gives you uh, in plus, in some sense. But maybe some someone can answer this thing because. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it says. Yeah, but this okay. This in the case of a, of the criminal group, it's it's known by making it act on this space. Also, it was by search compare. So this is something which is known. Uh, okay, so, search did it for algebraically closed field, but then Christian in the PhD did. Uh, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, well, okay, maybe okay. Yeah. Well, if not, then thank thanks again for her series of new courses, and we resume at three shots.